Hello, ladies and gentlemen. In this series of videos, we are going to learn all about journal entries. In my view, if you're taking an introductory accounting course, this is the most important topic of the course. I don't think it's the most difficult topic of the course. I think this is the number one most important topic of the course. When I teach accounting, I always say to myself, if a student doesn't understand journal entries, they should not pass this course. And in fact, many of them don't pass the course if they don't understand journal entries well. So understanding this concept well, I, in my view, it's the key to your success and happiness in an accounting course. Okay, let's get started. So when I think about journal entries, I actually think about physics, which is a little bit odd. I don't think about, uh, you know, my accounting class. I think about this guy, Isaac Newton, who uh, many of you likely have heard of. Isaac Newton is the guy who was famously uh, sitting under a tree one day and an apple fell on his head and he thought, oh, that's gravity or something like that. I, I don't know the whole story. Anyway, Isaac Newton's very famous for having uh, three laws of motion. Uh, the first law of motion is that an object in motion wants to stay in motion, an object at rest wants to stay at rest. Second law is uh, force equals mass times acceleration. But the third law, the third law is the one I always think about when I think about accounting journal entries. What Isaac Newton said was, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And the reason I think about it when I think of journal entries is anytime a company has a transaction, there's at least two things happening simultaneously and they're equal and opposite forces. So let's, uh, let's have a look and see what I mean. So let's say you're running a company and uh, you decide to buy a car. So, of course, you go, okay, well, I'm going to buy a car. And let's just say you pay cash. You could get a car loan just as easily, but let's say you pay cash. So your amount of cars that your company owned just went up by, I don't know, $20,000. You bought a $20,000 car. All right, wonderful. Well, Again, this is accounting, and I got to think of that Newtonian rule. Okay, my cars went up. That, that much is obvious. Something else simultaneously must have happened. How do I know that? Because I know how accounting works. And accounting works, uh, there's never just one thing happening uh, in isolation. There's always at least two things happening sort of simultaneously, equal forces uh, pushing on a transaction. So what else happened? Well, I paid for the car, and that means my cash went down by 20k now we could have two things simultaneously going up and that still would be a valid uh, journal entry and we'll talk about how and when that happens in a moment but for first journal entry ever car goes up cash goes down that's a that's a great uh, journal entry now the bad news, well, maybe not bad news, just the reality is we don't record transactions with up arrows and down arrows in accounting. We, we don't do that. We record transactions with debits and credits. So we're going to go over the rules of debits and credits here, and the rules will follow us for a long time. Here are the rules. We have this accounting equation, right? A equals L plus SE. You all recall from my first series of videos that A stands for assets, L for liabilities, SE for shareholders equity. I'll put off to the side here. Here's some accounts that affect my shareholders equity. I have revenues, expenses, and dividends. Okay, so I'm just going to draw some arrows here. I'll explain what I do kind of after I draw this up, down, down, up, down, up. And DR, oh, that's an R, CR, DR, CR, DR, CR. Um, okay, so I'm just going to touch on this now. S if as an accountant, I want to make an asset go up, I debit it. DR stands for debit. CR stands for credit. I often get the, um, the question from my students, 
I get that CR is credit, like the first two letters of credit are CR. I don't get why the first two letters of debit are DR. Uh, in my limited research, and I haven't researched this very hard, in my limited research, my understanding here is that these accounting has been around for hundreds or even thousands of years. These abbreviations come from Latin, and I guess the Latin words started with DR and CR, and so they've just it's just stuck with us for all of these years. So uh, I, I know it's a little bit odd that DR is debit, but DR is debit. Just you'll get to know that as, as the course progresses. So anyway, if I want to make an asset go up, I need to debit it. If I want to make a, uh, an asset decrease, I credit it. And the opposite is true of liabilities and shareholders' equity. If I want liabilities to increase, I need to credit them, and decrease, I need to debit them. So let's go back up to our initial transaction here. Uh, we said cars have to go up and cash has to go down. So the first question I'd ask you, and we'll do our journal entry just over on the side here. The first question I have to ask you is, what is a car? Like, what is it in terms of this category? Asset, liability, equity, we haven't touched on revenues, expenses, dividends yet, but I will in a moment. Uh, and a car is an asset, right? It's something you can own, control, provides you an economic benefit to do so. So we've got an asset going up. It looks like I'm going to need to debit my car, right? Asset, up arrow, debit. So let's debit car. Now, on the right side of my paper, if, if I pretend that this is the piece of paper, on the right side of the paper, I'm just going to write DR with an underline up there and CR with an underline up there. Underneath DR, I'm going to write the number, 20,000, because that's what I paid for my car. I don't put a dollar sign here. I just put 20,000. Uh, now, cash went down. i got to say to myself, okay, what is cash? Cash, again, is an asset, and it's an asset decreasing. So assets, when they decrease, they take a credit. CR, cash. Now, underneath the CR column, I write 20,000. Again, no dollar sign. The uh, final things I need to make this a good journal entry is I need to write a date. So uh, let's just write the date June 15th, 2017. And I need to describe what happened. Purchased a car. Now, in the examples I do in this video series, I'm not going to be writing descriptions. Uh, many times your prof will allow you to do journal entries without descriptions. In reality, you always write a description with your journal entry, but you know your prof may be like me uh, and not require it, but your prof may require it in class, and that's just something that you'll need to uh, figure out. But I'm, I'm not going to tend to write descriptions. But at this point, we have a good journal entry. We have a debit, a credit. The debits and credits are equal. They must be equal. If our debits and credits are not equal, then we'll go out of balance. And as you've likely learned by now, balancing means a lot in accounting. Uh, so debits equal credits. We have one account debited, one account credited. We could have more than one account debited and more than one account credited as long as the total amounts are equal. So if I could have debit three accounts uh, you know, for $5,000 each and credit one account for $15,000, totally a fine journal entry, right? Uh, I have a date, a description, and I am good. Uh, so this is a good journal entry. So back to the rules, debit an asset to make it go up, credit an asset to decrease it for liabilities and shareholders' equity, debits make them go down, credits make them increase. Now, revenues always help our shareholders' equity. Companies want to maximize their revenue because it helps their shareholders' equity. It, it provides them higher profit. Profit goes into retained earnings and makes retained earnings go up. So if revenues always make shareholders' equity go up, revenues always take a credit. Expenses are the opposite. They, oh, DD, no, DR. Uh, they always hurt our shareholders' equity. So expenses always take a debit. Dividends, much like expenses always hurt our shareholders' equity, they make retained earnings go down, they take a debit as well. In the next batch of videos, we are just going to be working through problems. Module 2 is all about problems related to journal entries. We'll learn how to prepare trial balances as well. So stay tuned for the next batch of videos.